Welcome again to Super Sweet Sunday. Would everybody stand? Everyone stand here at all of our campuses. Stand to your feet. Because it's super sweet. Because it's super sweet. Because it's super sweet. Now, if you're a kid in the house, give me a crazy scream. Ah! All right, please be seated. Sometimes I need to do that to get fired up. I was thinking this past week, I've quit some stuff that I regret. Have you ever quit something? You look back and you're like, I wish I hadn't have quit the team or I wish I hadn't have quit that job or, or maybe you're like, I quit on a marriage or I quit studying too early or, or I quit, I quit. And some people tell me, you know, I've quit on God. But when I think about things I've quit, kids, this is very, very embarrassing. I wanna tell you a story when I was 16 years old, and this story is about me quitting something. And you're gonna hear from my father, that's right, my dad, because I can't really tell the story very well, but he can, watch this. Those of you who are parents and have had the privilege of celebrating the 16th birthday of one of your kids, you know it's a very pivotal moment for many reasons, but primarily that's the time, in South Carolina at least, when someone could get their driver's license. And Ed looked forward to a lot of things about turning 16, but more than anything else, now he could drive a car. So we let him go out the first time with his new license. He went on a date with a very fine, terrific young gal by the name of Lisa and he went over to Lisa's home. He was supposed to be back before it got dark, but guess what? He wasn't back in time, and so that was the first trauma. It's dark, Ed's not back, it's the first time he's been out with a car, so we went through that first emotional experience until finally we settled in, and Ed, we felt, was a good driver, a safe driver, took responsibility, and we sort of stopped praying as hard and worrying about him as much. And he began to talk about getting a car. Wouldn't it be great, Dad, if I had a car to go to school next year? Wouldn't it be great, Mom, if, if I were able to go where I want to go without having to borrow your car? And so that's the way the sales process commenced. Until finally, about in May, uh, we bought a car for Ed, and uh, we had it ready with the keys all prepared. But I thought I'd put a little incentive there. Ed was a good student when he wanted to study and got interested in something, he just went to the top. But if it didn't attract him and he wasn't interested, he just sort of showed up in class. Uh, most of us are like that, unfortunately, and Ed was like that. And with his interest in basketball and so many friends and activities, sort of academics was at the second place or third place or fourth place down the line. And so I thought, you know, before we give him the car, I'm gonna put a little challenge there. So I bought a book entitled The Raven. As most of you know, it's a biography of Sam Houston. It's a short book, easy read. I didn't get him war and peace or anything like that. And I said, Ed, read The Raven. I want you to do that for me next couple of weeks. This was in, uh, toward the end of school in May. He said, okay, Dad. He said, what about my car? I said, we're looking at it. Now, mind you, we'd already bought the car. We had the keys, we were just waiting. And I wrote in the book, The Raven, about, oh, four pages from the back. Dear Ed, when you get to this point, call your mom or myself, we'll give you the keys to the car we purchased for you. Love, Dad. Now, he began to read that sometime around the end of May. And all through the summer, he says, am I gonna get a car? We said, well, we're looking at it. How are you coming with reading The Raven? Oh, I've already moved through, I'm, I'm in the third chapter. And so this went on virtually all summer long. I'd ask him, hey, have you read The Raven? Have you been, I, I, I'm halfway through, Dad. I, I really, I'm really enjoying it. And so finally we get to a week or so before school began in the fall. Now we're in the latter part of August. And Ed says, are you gonna get me a car so I can go to school? 
I said, son, did you finish reading the raven? He said, no, I'm toward the end. I said, go get the book and bring it to me. So he went to his room, brought down the book, and there it said, dear son, when you get to this point, your car is ready. And he looked, he said, do I have a car? I said, yes. And I said, remember I told you in the end of May to read this book? I said, if you had read the book like I asked you to do in the first three or four days there, you would have had wheels all summer long. And I gave him the keys and he nodded. And I think that was a wonderful moment of teaching for a very terrific 16 year old guy. So kids, listen to me very carefully. When your parents give you a book to read, when you're like 15 or 16, read the book. For that matter, I've never liked Sam Houston. Back in the day when that statue was down there, I would just look at him with just, ah, ah, because uh, it reminded me that I quit something that I should have stayed with. So it's easy, isn't it, to quit? It's almost like we have a culture of the quit. We applaud the quit. What I'm gonna talk about today, though, is the power of staying with something. I'm gonna talk to you about endurance. I want to talk to you about committing. Don't quit, commit. Kids, say it with me. Don't quit, commit. What then should I commit to? That's a, that's a pretty good question. I'm, I'm talking about commitment. I'm talking about endurance. I'm talking about trust. What should we commit to? Well, I'm going to answer that question very, very quickly. I want you to go back with me, everyone. Rewind. I'm talking about way back, 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 back to like almost the beginning of time. There was a guy in the Bible named Noah. Noah. Would you say Noah with me? Noah. Noah. Noah said no to quitting. And Noah said yes to committing. Because in our culture, we'd rather quit than commit, commit. The world in Noah's day was really weird. As I've studied the history around it, it was a very advanced culture, but a lot of people, in fact, most people had quit on God. They had quit on God. Do you have the coloring books, mom and dad? Kids, you have the coloring books? I'm gonna read some words and you can fill in these words because it tells the story, one of the most powerful stories about commitment, about endurance in the scriptures. The first one, see the heart? Man's bad made God sad. Do that with me. Everyone together. That means, wow, it's sad, but there, there is some hope. Once again, so when something happens this week that's kind of crazy, just go, I do that sometimes. I don't know why, I just, I just do it. So the people had quit on God. God, though, the Bible says, was looking for someone who was committed to him. And that person was Noah. No quit Noah. And the second thing I want you to think about and maybe jot down is people's sin was so insane. God had to make it rain. <laughs> people's sin, their behavior was so insane, God had to make it rain. Well, let's make it rain right now. Everybody snap your fingers. Keep your fingers going at all of our locations. God said, I am going to flood planet Earth. All these people who've quit on me, I'm gonna flood planet Earth, but I'm gonna give them a chance to commit to me, the rain stops now. And we go back to the story. I'm talking about Noah. 
There's Noah. And the scripture tells me something in Genesis chapter six, verse eight, that's very, very powerful. Let's read this together, okay? Okay? Okay, okay, I just thought so. I, you know, I thought you were there. One, two, three. But Noah found favor in the eyes of the Lord. That's powerful, found favor. That's the first mention we have of the concept of grace in the Bible. Found favor. What is grace? Grace is something we don't deserve. Grace is unmerited favor. God was looking for someone who was committed to him. Because you'll notice something, all of us, that's right, all of us are born with the equipment for commitment. We're born, you're born with the equipment for commitment. And now, 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 now you might be going, what are you talking about? The capacity for faith, the capacity for trust, the capacity for endurance. I have the equipment, you have the equipment, to commit. God, right now, in 2019, is still looking for Noah-type men and women. He's still looking for Noah-type boys and girls. He's still looking for Noah-type students to make a difference. And the scripture says, Noah, this is unbelievable, was the only one who was walking with God. He was the only one who was committed to God. You know, sometimes when you do something against your parents' wishes, kids, your parents might say something like this, God loves you too much and I love you too much to allow you to get away with this behavior. So there is going to be some punishment in the cards, right? Sin has to have a punishment. Notice God is a God of judgment. We know that. He's perfectly balanced, though. He's also a God of grace and mercy. God is patient. How long did you test the patience of God before you became a follower of Christ, before you committed your life to Christ? That's a deep question, a profound question. We see in this text the judgment of God, but also we see the grace of God. So the next blank I want you to fill in says, says this, and here's what God said to Noah. Noah, you'll need a boat to float. So we said, you'll need to float so build a boat. Say it with me. You'll need to float, so build a boat. God said, rain noise again. I'm gonna make it rain. Noah had, hadn't seen rain before. The earth was watered from underneath. Noah was going through a mid-millennial life crisis. He was 500 years old. And God said, build a boat. Oh man, how in the world could someone live to be that age? Yeah, I mean, you have your masters and you've done some doctoral studies. And how, do you, do you believe that? Yes. If you read about the pre-fallen nature of man, just even physically, and you realize sin had just entered the equation, you realize too, there was a mist, there was a vapor, a cloud that covered the earth that took out all of these harmful pollutants and things like that. And obviously you throw in God's mercy and power and sovereignty. Yes, 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 yes. And also too, if you notice, when men and women lived to these astronomically, uh, 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 astronomical ages, that sin became more and more rampant, more and more deviant, more and more dark. God is going to make it rain and <laughs> because the people we're going to face the judgment of God. And they're the ones that chose it. Yeah, God said, hey, Noah, I am gonna give you favor, I'm gonna give you grace, and in verse nine, this is so good, Noah, let's read it together, 
Noah, that's you and me, Noah was a righteous man, blameless among the people of his time, and he walked with God. Are you walking with God? When you walk with someone, you talk with someone. When you walk with someone, you get to know that other person. Hey kids, you've walked with your mom before. You've walked with your dad before. You really share some things. You hear some things. Notice that Noah didn't run with God. I mean, when you're running with someone, it's hard, it's hard to carry on a conversation. I think sometimes we try to run ahead of God. I've done that before, haven't you? Run around God, run behind him. God wants us to walk with him, to be in step with him, to listen to him, to laugh, to talk. He wants to lead you and lead me into our purpose that he has for our life. Hey kids, are you walking with God? It begins with this commitment to him and we have to listen to his voice. When I grew up as a kid in the mountains of Western North Carolina, I had, a, I had like three friends I would hang out with a lot, Robert, Gary, and Mike. And invariably, when the sun would set, that was back in the day, parents where kids actually went outside and played, remember that? That's right, kids, there's something called outside. So, we would play, and especially during the summers when the sun would set, I would hear this call. Robert, come home. Robert would stop in his tracks, make a beeline to his house. Gary's father was a giant man. Gary was a kid, even when he was like eight years old, he sweated like a pack mule. I don't know why, I've never seen anyone sweat as much as Gary Ford. Gary had a father that was a massive guy, and his father would just say one, one, one thing. Gary, and believe me, Gary bolted home. Sweat flying off of his hair, he was there. Mike Harkins, his dad was, I mean, this guy smoked more cigarettes than anyone I've ever seen in my life. You know, camel, is it camel filters, I guess? He would take a long drag on that camel filter, a big cloud of smoke. He would just go, Mike, come on home now. When we heard our parents' voice, boom, we obeyed them. When Noah heard God's voice, hey, Noah, build a boat. Boom, he started building a boat. He'd never seen a boat. I mean, you couldn't YouTube it. You couldn't go to Home Depot and go, yeah, I'm, I'm building a boat. It's gonna be a football and a half long, uh, four stories high. Uh, uh, yeah, and, and it's, it's, it's gonna be for a bunch of animals. So, so yeah, just tell me. No, no. Noah did what God told him to do even though he didn't have all the details. <laughs> Noah did what God told him to do, even though he didn't have all the details. Think about all of the things God has led you to do, and I think about the things God has led me to do, and I didn't have the details. You're not gonna have all the details. This project took Noah, you ready for this? 120 years, longer than our lifespan. I don't know about you kids, but after about 20 years, I would go, I quit. I'm sure the first couple of weeks he was fired up. Moms and dads, like the first couple of weeks on the diet, yeah, I'm getting ripped, you know, and then I'm done. First couple of weeks of school, yeah, I'm done. First couple of chapters about a guy named Sam Houston, I quit, you know, you know, but I've got to, I've got to give some props to my man Noah. He stayed with it. The patience, the endurance, even though he didn't have all of the details up front. God is looking for people who trust him. On top of that, why 120 years? Because God still was giving people an opportunity 
to commit to him. He didn't want them to experience the judgment. He didn't want them to experience the pain. They were laughing. You know they were laughing at Noah like, Noah, what are you doing, man? What is this? And if you know your geography, he was at least 100 miles from the ocean. Again, he'd never seen a boat. They'd never seen it rain. It was just like craziness. Yet that is what was in play for this man who walked with God. If you're walking with someone, you've got to make a commitment to walk with them. I mean, you have to take the first step. The first step is, is to say, Lord, I, I give my life to you. I commit my life to you. So basically, we're putting our commitments on the commitments that God tells us to put our commitments on. That is what we commit to. He, he walked with God. God also told him that he was gonna bring a zoo to him. And something else I want you to fill in. Noah's family and his zoo were all on board for God's rescue. Let's say it again together. Noah's family and his zoo were all on board for God's rescue. Noah didn't go, well, uh, uh, God, how do I get all these animals in here? There's only one door. I mean, how do I do it, God? And how about feeding them? And, and, and how about all of the other issues? And, and I'm, I'm just not sure. So I'm not gonna step out and do this until I have everything done, until I've checked with my attorneys and accountants, until I have you know, the T's crossed and the I's dotted. Then, 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 God, then, then I'll step out. Well, I just think about Fellowship Church, our journey. We started, as you've heard me say, a squillion times in a little office complex. We just took a step of faith out. We didn't have any details. We, we moved to a little fine arts center in Irving, Texas, from there to MacArthur High School. No details. We were able to, to, to put a little down payment on this tract of land, our main campus in Grapevine, miles and miles and miles away from where we started. We didn't have the details. I had no idea that we would have campuses all over the place. I had no idea. I had no, no clue. We didn't have the details. We trusted God. So Noah and his family, God said, hey, man, get into the ark, you and your family. I'll take care of the rest. So that rain started again. Come on now. Come on. Come on help me. And think about it. Mr. Lion said to Mrs. Lion, I'm on in the boat. <laughs> Kids, do that with me. <laughs> and what animal is that? Mr. Elephant said to Mrs. Elephant, <laughs> let's just walk into the ark. Hope that'll hold us. Mr. Monkey said to Mrs. Monkey, ooh, 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 ah, 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 ah. I love this message because I can do sound effects. I talk in sound effects. People ask me sometimes, do you work on your sound effects? No, they just come out. Ah, 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 ah. <laughs> All sorts of sound effects. And all the animals were in the ark. Noah and his family were in the ark because they walked with God. The ark rescued them. The ark saved them because they committed their lives to the Lord. They heard the voice of God. And we've got the voice of God Black paint on white paper. We've got the voice of God. We've got the voice of God when we're walking with the right people because, hey, hey, single adult, if you're walking with God, all you gotta do, I don't know who I should date. I don't know who I should marry. I don't know who I should hang out with. All you gotta do in most circumstances is look to the left, look to the right, 
And as you're walking with God, look at the other people who were walking with God. And a lot of times, wow, 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 great things happen. <laughs> Walk with God. Walk with God. Yeah. One more. Once the earth was dry, don't you love this rhyme? I love it. On the dime, peace of mind, yours and mine. Once the earth was dry, God placed a rainbow in the sky. The rainbow, a covenant. God said, I'll never ever do this again. And this is a sign of love and grace. A rainbow, a rainbow. Man's bad. That's right, make God sad. People's sin was so insane, God had to make it rain. God said, you'll need to float. So, hey, Noah, build a boat. Noah's family and his zoo were all on board for God's rescue. Once the earth was dry, God placed a rainbow in the sky. Hey kids, the last thing I want you to do Look up just a second. See the back page of this coloring book? See that? Okay. I want you to put your finger, or you can give you a color, the ark, this boat. And I like it. God didn't say build a canoe. He didn't say build a ski boat or a bass boat. He said, uh, uh, uh. Hey, Noah, start with a super yacht. Okay. So this is an ark made of wood, and you see the cross. You can trace your finger on the cross. The Bible says the ark is a picture of the cross. The ark was made of wood. The cross was made of wood. The Bible says in Genesis that Noah used pitch to seal the ark, the word pitch in the New Testament refers to the atoning blood of Jesus that seals your salvation and mine for eternity. There was only one door in the ark. Jesus said, I am the door. He said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. We all face an appointment with God. We all face that judgment. The ark saved Noah and his household. It rescued him. The cross will save you and me, friends, and will rescue us forever and ever. Have you stepped onto the ark? Have you committed your life to Jesus? That is what living is all about. Let's pray. Father, I'm gonna pray a prayer right now and this is not my prayer. I've prayed this before, but this can be someone else's prayer. Maybe you're a child, maybe you're a student, maybe you're a single adult, maybe you're married with 2.3 kids you can pray this prayer and become a follower of Christ because God is extending his grace to you right now. It doesn't matter what you've done, what you've thought. It doesn't matter how far away you are from God. God is a God of the mulligan, of forgiveness, of a second chance. Just simply say, God, I believe to the best of my ability that you love me so much that you sent Jesus Christ to die on the cross for our sins and to rise again. Jesus, you are, you are, Jesus, my ark. And I ask you, Jesus Christ, to come into my life. I open the door of my life and invite you in, Jesus. Hey, if you prayed that prayer with me, as our heads are bowed and eyes are closed for the first time, would you lift your hand if you prayed that prayer with me? Wow, so many hands are going up. That's awesome, awesome. Oh yeah, and our other campuses as well. Man, that's so great. That's the best thing that you'll ever do. You've taken the first step in your walk with God. Now, 
Fellowship Church, we want to teach you and encourage you to continue to take those steps as you discover God's amazing plan for your life. We thank you for our kids. We thank you for our church. We thank you, God, for what you're doing right now. We ask all these things in Jesus' name and for his sake alone. Amen.